up as they come along. Okay, there's my bio, which I hope everyone has seen previously as such. So today we're going to be talking scenic landscapes of Louisville, and I'll try and talk a little bit loud uh, a, a bit. And I want to point out that I did not take all the photographs, all these amazing, you're going to see some amazing photographs in this um, presentation. And I've listed several of the photographers that I know who has taken some of these photos. The photographs that don't look amazing, I took. But the ones that are amazing, these folks, Jesse Hurt to Don Yeoman and John Nation are phenomenal photographers and took a lot of these. And so I always want to give them credit. Uh, so first, let's talk about the Olmstead Parks. I think most people are familiar with the, our beautiful Olmstead Parks, so I thought I'd start out with them first, Cherokee, Iroquois, and Shawnee. And Louisville does have some amazing, beautiful parks throughout Jefferson County. Uh, this is off the website of the government, showing where all of our parks are located. But our Olmstead Parks really began back on May 21st, 1891. That was a hundred and, what, 33 years ago, I want to say, um, when uh, Frederick Law Olmsted came to Louisville and talked about the, the benefits of a public park system. And um, the genesis of that public park system was via Andrew Cowan and Thomas Speed. They were two civic leaders here in Louisville who advocated to do the parks. And one of the reasons they wanted to do with this park system was to bring more people to Louisville. It was actually an economic development tool. You know, you think of parks being beautiful and scenic and all of, for the enjoyment of the residents, but actually their motive was we had all these manufacturing plants uh, in the late 1800s that needed workers, needed people to live here. And so they thought by doing a park system it would bring folks here to Louisville. And I put up the census data here in the upper left-hand corner, which shows that Louisville started out like the 15th largest city in the country, but by 1890, we were the 20th. So we were losing ground, becoming less of a major city uh, when they proposed the parks in 1891, thinking that, again, let's bring more, let's reverse that decline in population and bring more people here. While we were successful in building the parks, unfortunately we did not succeed in um, bringing more people here. I forget what the uh, census data is today, but I don't even know if we're in the top 50 anymore in population. But regardless, we ended up with these great parks that Frederick Law Olmsted designed here. And here are some images of those. Uh, Big Rock, everyone know where Big Rock is there in Cher off Beargrass Creek? Yes. And a nice, we have hiking trails and lakes and uh, beautiful foliage. Here are some more photographs of the lake and of the uh, uh, shelter house and bridges. They have beautiful bridges across Beargrass Creek. This is an aerial view of Cherokee Park showing all the roadway systems and all. So, uh, beautiful Cherokee Park is one of our parks, and here are some amazing photographs of uh, Cherokee Park. The one on the left, uh, this is a Cherokee Triangle, that's the Daniel Boone statue there just at the entranceway to Cherokee Park. You can see the city of Louisville in the distance. Likewise, this is a fall foliage photograph. I think Jesse Hurt took these two photographs. But you see the city in the distance, and unfortunately the uh, shelter house there, the TP shelter house, has since been uh, demolished, but uh, just beautiful aerial views of Cherokee Park. This is Shawnee Park on the western part of Louisville. You've got the Ohio River just here on the border of Shawnee. And Shawnee is a totally different park than Cherokee. Shawnee was more of a recreational, passive type of park, whereas uh, Cherokee was more active. It had a golf course. It had, um, it had a golf course there. It had a lot of shelter houses and all, whereas here at Shawnee, they had open fields in which they could play football or soccer and baseball and all sorts of different types of sports. So it was, the whole concept of Shawnee was totally different than Cherokee which, due to its hills, didn't lend itself 
very well to flat fields. Uh, and this is a Iroquois Park. Again, it's totally different from the other, from a Shawnee and Cherokee. It's more of a mountain, a big hill. For those of you who have been to Iroquois, it's a huge hill. And it has a summit at the top with a lookout that you can see downtown Louisville. And um, on the left there, it talks about the origins of uh, Iroquois Park. It was known as Jacobs Park for uh, many years because uh, Mayor Charles Jacob helped purchase the land there, it says, what, in 1889. So uh, Iroquois, totally different configuration than Shawnee and Cherokee. Uh, let's go next to Cave Hill Cemetery. Always like this view here of it in the winter there with the, the lake kind of frozen over. But then spring comes along and it looks like that. So I'll show you both. There's the frozen, there's the spring. And that's bamboo on either side. Uh, this is bamboo. And uh, the Cave Hill folks cut this vista through on a regular basis. If you know anything about bamboo, it grows very fast. And so they're constantly having to cut back the bamboo to give. And the reason why they put the bamboo in there is to help uh, retain the uh, hillside from soil erosion down into the lake. So the bamboo helps retain the uh, soil, but you have to cut it down to uh, keep the vista. Here is uh, where Cave Hill is in relationship to downtown Louisville. Back when Cave Hill started in 1848, it was way out in the countryside. Now it's in the inner city. But back in those days, uh, Cave Hill was far away from downtown. If we were building a new Cave Hill today, it would be out in Odom County. That's how far out we would have to put Cave Hill to keep it in its rural state, state there. Here are some uh, images of a uh, uh, an aerial view of Cave Hill, along with some of the key buildings, the gatehouse at Broadway and Baxter, the administration building, which is in the center, and then this is the entrance off of Grinstead Drive. Now, a lot of people get lost in Cave Hill due to the roadway uh, there, and as you can see on this map of uh, Cave Hill, a lot of curves, a lot of different uh, circles and things that you can get lost in very easily. The uh, roadway mimics the t topography of the hillside there at Cave Hill. So as you're driving around, you're actually driving along the contours of the landscape. It's very beautiful, but yet it kind of makes it hard to find your way out if you get lost. Here are some uh, original images of Cave Hill's design. It was initially only 90 acres of land, very small. Today it's almost 300 acres of land. So it's three times the size of what it started out as. And then here are some historic photographs before all the trees got big. Nowadays you couldn't take a photograph of that because all the foliage and trees have grown up so much. But back then it wasn't as, as much as it is today. Uh, here's a beautiful view of uh, some of the Cape Hill flowers. Uh, this is the Grinstead Gate here on the left. And then this on the right is Muhammad Ali's grave site at Cave Hill, the iconic, legendary Muhammad Ali. And uh, they plant the flowers in the landscape there to attract both butterflies and bees. So, you know, he was known for his butterfly and bee uh, uh, talk, and so the, the landscape is designed to attract bees and butterflies. Here's another view of the uh, grand entranceway to Cave Hill. Uh, they have this long entrance drive. Got the gatehouses on either side there. It's just a beautiful, beautiful uh, entranceway into Cave Hill. That's the administration building. And uh, up top, I've got the uh, spring views of Cave Hill with the dogwoods and the tulips and all. And then in the lower part here, that's the fall view of Cave Hill. The um, tree on the left is a ginkgo tree with its beautiful yellow uh, foliage. And then this one on the right, that's the main entrance drive to Cave Hill. So you get a spring and fall view there of the cemetery. I love this uh, um, grave site here. It's called the Price Atwood 
um, uh, memorial area, grave site, and they just plant tulips and azaleas. It's a spectacular and they're at the Price Atwood uh, grave site. The Price Atwoods were in the Peasley Gaubert Paint Company, and that's one reason why they were able to afford such a beautiful uh, resting spot here in Cave Hill. Speaking of the ginkgos again, uh, this is the legendary ginkgo of Cave Hill. It's massive. It's over 150 years old. I don't know how old uh, it actually is, but uh, maybe 160, maybe 170 years old. And when it, as most of you know, when it loses its leaves all at once, it creates this golden snow, as I call it, this golden snow uh, on the, uh, the ground. Just spectacular. I love the ginkgo, although I like the male ginkgos. It's the female ginkgos you got to watch out for because <laughs> the seeds tend to give off a little odor that a lot of people find a little bit not, not as pleasant. Unfortunately, when you have uh, these beautiful tall trees, uh, we have storms that come through periodically and topple them over. This was a storm not too long ago that came through Cave Hill and knocked over several trees and unfortunately it does some damages to the uh, headstones there. Fortunately, Cave Hill has the financial resources to restore the cemetery and so they will they usually clean this up within a week or two and make it look like nothing has happened. The 1974 tornado, April 3rd, 1974 tornado, came within a quarter of a mile of hitting Cave Hill. Can you imagine what would have happened if uh, a tornado had hit Cave Hill? Goodness gracious, I don't, I don't want to think about it, but uh, they do have periodically storms of this nature that go through and tear down some trees. Another nice view, uh, again, possibly by Jesse Hurt of the fall foliage of uh, Cave Hill looking back towards the skyline of Louisville. Always like this photo. I think Jesse did this photo as well, but uh, just spectacular with the snow. Usually, when it snows uh, at Cave Hill, they close all the entrance ways down. You can't um, go into the cemetery primarily because it becomes so treacherous with all these curvilinear streets. It's difficult to drive in. But that's really a beautiful photograph looking back at the skyline. My, one of my most favorite uh, memorials at Cave Hill is the Satter White. Um, it's the most picturesque monument at Cave Hill. Uh, the uh, dome structure there is patterned on Marie Antoinette's Temple of Love in Versailles, France. How do we say Versailles in Kentucky? Versailles. Versailles. That's correct. <laughs> but it had it was built in about 1929. This memorial and. So they planted all these white azaleas all the way around it, and the white azaleas typically bloom in mid to late April, and it looks like white snow all the way around it. It's just so beautiful, the uh, Satter White. Okay, that's Cave Hill. So we've talked about the Olmstead Parks, talked about Cave Hill. Let's go down to our waterfront, which we have transformed over the last 20 or so years. Uh, that's what it looks like today. Uh, very beautiful. I call it the green welcoming mat of Louisville. But it once looked like that, an industrial wasteland. It looked like that back in the mid-1980s with all of the uh, scrap yards and fuel tanks and sand piles and Lord only knows what else was in there. Just uh, no one wanted to go down there. A lot of railroad tracks. But then we transformed it into that. So that, that is the exact same area, only we've cleaned it all up. There's a nice view looking back towards the skyline of Louisville, of um, Waterfront Park. Very beautiful with the snow. It kind of accentuates the, uh, the curves and the, uh, the landscaping there. Uh, it has some water features in it as well, which I like. It kind of mimics the falls of the Ohio that are nearby. But yeah, he's got these cascading water uh, fountains. 
that the kids like to go down and play in, which they aren't supposed to do, but they tend to do it anyways, especially on hot days. Uh, the Big Four Bridge uh, has been uh, repurposed into a walking bridge from being used as a railroad. Uh, me and my wife walk around this almost on a weekly basis. This big ramp goes across over into southern Indiana. Very nicely in addition to the waterfront. And they are expanding uh, the, uh, the waterfront to the western part of town as well. This is um, a proposal. It, it hasn't been built yet. They're just starting to uh, create it or build it. But uh, they plan on extending the design of the waterfront here towards the west. And the sunsets along the riverfront are just spectacular. We, me and my wife always like walking in towards the dusk part of the day and just watching the sun set over the river there. Just uh, beautiful, beautiful views. So uh, also on the waterfront, we, they just built the botanical gardens uh, along the waterfront area. So uh, this is uh, Frankfurt Avenue here. There's River Road up there, and this is I-71. And um, they haven't built all of the botanical gardens yet. It's slowly but surely coming back. Uh, they've still got, they've only developed maybe 25% of the area. They're currently building a Japanese garden right into this area here. That's a proposal of what it's supposed to look like. And some of you Louisvillians may know that this used to be a landfill right here. And so it, that's why it says from landfill to landmark. Uh, so they've reclaimed this land into a botanical garden and building a Japanese uh, garden there as well. This is the proposed site plan of what it's going to look like when it's ultimately completed as to the date, as to the year of when it's going to be fully complete. I'm sure it all depends on fundraising. But like I say, they've already built this lower section. They're building the Japanese garden right now. Once that is done, I'm sure they'll start building the other sections as well. But it's going to be spectacular when it's all said and done. Here is a view of it as it currently exists, looking back towards the skyline. Uh, this is sort of an uh, uh, exhibition building that they've already built. They've got some greenhouse uh, space over here, some gardens. I love this little rock area here to walk down this path on. So it's slowly coming about. It's not, again, it's only about 25% complete at this point. Still got ways to go. Here are some more views of it. Beautiful gardens that they have. And then at uh, holiday time in December, they put these colorful lights up. And look at that. Excuse me. Isn't that and that's something with all the uh, colorful lights there during the holiday season, looking back at the um, uh, skyline. Oh, him hearing aids. It's all got to move up closer. <laughs> so it's uh, very beautiful uh, to see all the lights. Me and my uh, wife took our family there a couple of years ago and really had a good time. What is that? That's the Botanical Garden. Oh, but, oh. So Interstate 64, which is not too far from where we're at right now, you may not think of it being a landscaped area, but I've always marveled at it. You'd be driving through I-64 through downtown, through Louisville and not realize you're in an urban zone. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here's I-64 here. They put the tunnels through underneath. This is Cherokee Park right there. And then all the way... Uh, along I-64 between Grinstead Drive and Cannons Lane, they pretty much have a green buffer all the way along it. There's golf courses along the sides. There you have Big Spring uh, Golf Course. You got uh, Seneca Golf Course. A lot of green area along that. So as you're driving along I-64, you don't really see any development. No houses, no commercial buildings or anything. So I really always enjoy driving through that stretch of I-64 uh, without all that development in, <coughs> along the way. 
very few uh, cities have that sort of a scenic uh, pathway through their city. But a lot of it deals with these tunnels right here. And I know they're talking about expanding I-64 from four lanes to six lanes. We'll see how they want to deal with those tunnels. Hopefully they can keep them in some manner, but that's going to be a decision here <coughs> in the next few years that they'll have to come across. Well, that is private land around it, isn't it? It's a public land. It's a Cherokee oh, Park. Around those tunnels? It's public yes. land? Yeah. Uh, this is the courts of Old Louisville. So this is the Old Louisville neighborhood. And uh, here's an aerial view looking down on Old Louisville. And so you have St. James Court here, Belgravia Court, and Fountain Court. And I'll explain each one of those. But these courts, very, land, very nicely landscaped, really makes Old Louisville just a scenic oasis in the heart of the city. This is St. James Court, which is the main parkway of Old Louisville. Uh, of course, we have the beautiful fountain that is right in the center of the court area and the green space there. And all the houses along uh, St. James are very well landscaped. This is Belgravia Court, which runs perpendicular to St. James. Uh, likewise, it has all the houses have nice landscaping around them. There's a beautiful green median down, down the middle. So there is no streets here. Uh, the only way you uh, access the houses is via alleys on the back side. And this is Fountain Court. So there's, there's three courts, St. James, Belgravia, and Fountain Court. And uh, again, very well landscaped. Beautiful to stroll along and all. So I'll, I'll just go back real fast. And again, just kind of repeat. So you have St. James Court down the center, north, it runs north to south from Magnolia down to Hill Street down here. And then Belgravia goes from 4th over to 6th Street. And then Fountain Court just goes from 4th uh, over to St. James Court. By the way, when they uh, designed Fountain Court, it was supposed to be able to stand here and see the fountain, which is there in the center. But they built this building here which blocks that view. So while it's called Fountain Court, you really can't see the fountain from the court. What kind of a building is that they built? It's an apartment complex. Oh. Yeah. So anyways, here are, so there's St. James again, uh, Belgravia, and Fountain. Hmm. So I'm um, going to now talk about some houses that have some beautiful uh, landscaping around them. The first is called Garden Court. It was built there as part of the uh, Presbyterian Semin Seminary off of Alta Vista in the eastern Louisville, a bit since east, what, northeast a little bit, just off Lexington Road, really. But anyways, it's called gar Garden Court for obvious reasons. It has a huge garden in a court-like setting with all these rose bu bushes here, very scenic. Private home. Uh, it was uh, the home of the Norton family, and but uh, now it is. I think it's part of the Presbyterian Seminary. It was once was owned by U of L, but I think it no longer is. Here's a nice view of the uh, guard, uh, the main mansion oh, with a beautiful uh, pond out front with lily pads. Another house is the Schneider House. This is John Schneider who owns uh, Papa John's Pizza. You may have heard of that. Yes. And this is his house. He built this spectacular fantasy sort of home, if you will, out in the Anchorage area. And I got some aerial views of the house. Very well landscaped. It's got some lakes around it. Uh, and he's got a golf course around it as well. He built his own, I think it's like a par, uh, Three hole golf course wow. that he has part of his home, but um, like probably the, one of the most phenomenal landscaped houses in Louisville. Love it, acreage. And um, you don't see too many automobiles here. All of his automobiles are in a garage below the main plaza here. In fact, you can see the driveway that goes down into the lower portion there, where the uh, the cars are kept. But uh, 
Do they have spectacular? Uh, can you take a ride? I mean, I mean a bus ride through there? No, no, it's all private. It's He's all got private. gates up. Yes, you, you just cannot walk. The yeah. only way to view this is via Google Earth, via aerial photographs. Oh. Um, this is the Oxmoor Bullet Farm, just out Shelbyville Road at the Waterson Expressway. Um, it was founded back in the late 1700s. And uh, even though the front part doesn't have too much landscaping of note in the front, but on the rear of the house has some beautiful gardens uh, on the back side of the home. There you can see them. That's the front so, side right here. Yeah, this is the back side of the house. Oh, that's the back side. Uh, another phenomenal home is called Colonial Hall. It is right adjacent to Cherokee Park in the uh, sort of the center row highland section of Louisville. Colonial Hall, very stately mansion here, but it also has some lovely uh, landscaping around it. I'm just glad I don't have to maintain all that. I'm not sure what all that costs to maintain, but you can only imagine. Keep it looking as nice as it is. And this is Melcomb. This is a, a historic estate uh, in the Glenview section of Louisville, which is on the far east side of Louisville, as you can see adjacent to the Ohio River, which is up there. This is Melcomb here. And they've got an amphitheater there on their uh, land, on their property in which they have, periodically, they have parties out there and they have bands playing here. Very, uh, very estate-like, very nice, beautiful uh, landscaping. Can you take a tour? Okay. Uh, it's a private home. Yeah, this is on the east side of Louisville. Now, unfortunately, you cannot uh, visit this one either. Again, the only way you can visit this is from other people's photographs. But one place you can visit is the Alderman Park neighborhood. Alderman Park, I think, is perhaps maybe the most scenic neighborhood in Louisville. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with Alderman Park, but it's out the Preston Highway, just past, um, let me see, is it, you know, just past Eastern Parkway near Hess Lane. Hess Lane and uh, Preston Highway area. This is uh, Preston Highway right here. Poplar Level Road is on the east side, Preston on the west side. Hess Lane runs right along the northern border. On the southern border, you have a nice golf course, which is the Alderman Park Country Club. And then Alderman Park is right here. And you can just kind of see the other... Way up there. You, you can see the other neighborhoods around it that don't have many trees. Just notice all the trees in Alderman Park as opposed to all the other neighborhoods around that don't have as many trees. So Alderman Park was planned to have this beautiful foliage over all of its houses and streets. Just everyone hopefully is familiar with Alderman Park. If not, I highly recommend you go there. And coming up is the Dogwood Festival. Every uh, mid-April of each year they have a Dogwood Festival once the dogwoods all bloom. They put spotlights on them at night and they light up the entire neighborhood with these beautiful dogwoods. So yeah, it's a very scenic neighborhood. So I always recommend people, if you want to go see some beautiful landscapes of lawns and streets, go to Alderman Park. Beautiful houses as well. Speaking of beautiful houses, this is my house, believe it or not. <laughs> so I thought I'd show it. A lot of homes in Louisville have beautiful landscapes. They take pride in putting uh, uh, foliage around their homes. And my wife, I, I, I don't take any credit for this. My wife planted all, the, it's called Phlox. The Phlox is along the uh, driveway. And then she planted these tulips here, which bloom. And then this is our backyard. Very few here, one of the few people that get to see my backyard because it's hidden. But uh, my wife created this beautiful garden in the backyard with these walking paths, and she picked out various beautiful plantings around it. So, uh, but this is typical of many homes in Louisville that have done similar things of creating nice backyard areas and front lawns. But I just thought I'd show this one because I had access to the photographs for this. 
But our house is fairly modest. It's not like Melcombe or Garden Court or any of those huge mansions like John Schneider's house. Ours is more of a modest home. I think it was an open house one time. Yeah. And uh, as far we even have some buildings that have a lot of uh, landscaping on them. Particularly this building here in downtown Louisville, it's called the American Life Insurance Building. And it's got what's called a green roof. They actually have grass and plantings on top of the roof there. And here is another view of it on, right across from the Humana Building. And notice the sign says, Beware Beehives on the Roof. What they mean by that is they literally do have beehives up there. And the reason why they have the beehives is to uh, provide a place for the bees to populate all the other flowers in the downtown area. So it's really a cool thing that they've done here. So to, to help uh, all the flowers in downtown, they have bees up on this roof that, you know, during the day they'll go out to the other flowers. What do they call them? Uh, Pollinate, there you go, that's the word I was looking for, pollinate all the flowers. And the reason why people put green roofs on their buildings nowadays is for uh, to keep uh, the hot sun from, um, it helps cool the buildings uh, below by not having the hot sun on, on top of their roof. So yes. it's very natural ventilation, if you will. Of Does what they have to cook grass? They do have to maintain it, that is correct. They do have to trim it and keep it, uh, keep it nice up there. Although here's a good view of the, uh, the grass growing tall. This is another view of that the same roof. Golly, I can even see a cactus here. But there's the Humana building, and you can see all the grasses that are growing there on top of that roof. Pretty cool. A lot of people have no idea that that roof is up there like that. Only I, I've, I've been, actually been up there obviously and uh, know about it, but uh, pretty cool what they did. This is the uh, Agon building in downtown Louisville, this tall skyscraper. It's now called 400 West Market, but I still refer to it by its original name, Agon. And they have a beautiful plaza at street level here that they built. Nice little park in downtown Louisville. And this building hopefully will be under construction shortly. It was announced last year, but there's this building in downtown Louisville. It's called the Molee Building, M-O-L-E-E, -E, Molee Building right here. That they're going to do this addition to it that's going to have all sorts of plantings all around it. This is the uh, Cathedral of the Assumption here. So this is Muhammad Ali and 5th Street to kind of give you a little bearing as to where it is located in downtown Louisville. But the Moli building is going to have this addition that has all sorts of green landscaping a part of its design. It's going to be pretty spectacular, I think, once it's completed. Hopefully they will start construction of it here soon. Like I say, they announced it in the last year or so and hopefully will be built Soon. Tree up there too, a couple yeah, they got trees, and yeah, it's going to be wild when it's built. So, another uh, park that I want to go into is the Parklands of Floyd's Fork. It's out east of Louisville off the Snyder Freeway between Bardstown Road and Shelbyville Road. It's about 20 miles in length, it's a very long parkland area. Uh, so, on May 31st, 2011, they had a groundbreaking for the Parklands. On the right here is a map of where the Parklands is. It's all along Floyd's Fork. And what we have here, we have uh, Dan Jones, Mayor Greg Fisher, uh, Senator Mitch McConnell, and then uh, David Jones Sr. I do not know who that is on the left. But uh, they had a groundbreaking there on May 31st, 2011. And just five years later, they completed it. So this is David Jones Sr. and his son Dan Jones. They were the two advocates for the parks and really made sure that it happened. So within five years, they built over 400 acres of park land uh, in Louisville. In the upper left-hand corner is me and my wife. We were there at the dedication. We helped donate to the parklands. and. Uh, very proud of uh, being part of that whole process. 
Um, this circle here on the left, that is of uh, what's called the Brown Foreman Center. Very spectacular, very spectacular area. One of the most scenic sections of the parklands is called the Moss Gibbs Woodland Garden. Moss Gibbs Woodland Garden. I have a photo of the uh, name up there. But it's a small little trail area in the parklands which is just, I can't describe it, it's so scenic, it's so beautiful. I think it's one of the most picturesque areas of Louisville. Just these walking trails through it and they have benches along there and it's just the attention to detail of this one area is, yeah, it, it's overwhelming to go see it. Where is this again? It's in the Parkland, the Parklands of Louisville, Parklands of Floyd's Fork. It's that huge Parklands area out uh, east of the uh, Snyder Freeway. And the Moss Gibbs area is actually part of the, I think it's the Broad Run Park area of that section of the uh, area. So the, it's very beautiful. The Moss Gibbs Woodland Garden. Here are some more photographs of the uh, parklands. They have these beautiful bridges which go over Floyd's Fork. Floyd's Fork is here. There's Floyd's Fork. They have these bridges that, that bend over the river or over the creek. And nice, just great detail of everything. That's a walking trail. Yeah, they have a walking trails and uh, yeah. Highly recommend if you've not been out to the parklands of Floyd's Fork to go out there. Maybe they can take a van out there, show you around. But it's, it's a walking trail goes through the, someone's the garden. I mean, over to the right. Yeah, there, there's a roadway here, and then there's trails and walking trails throughout. Yeah, but over to the right. Yeah. 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 That little stream that goes through the woods there. Yeah, that's a hiking trail. That's part, oh. And then um, some of the neat things that they do there is they have these walls built of stone. They don't use any mortar in the stone to hold the stone in place. It's all held in by gravity. And uh, so they have a lot of these natural stone walls. Uh, the fishing, po uh, fishing ponds here. I just love it when I go there and I see the father and the sons out there uh, and daughters uh, fishing. I always hear a lot of bullfrogs croaking in that area. Some more images of uh, the parklands. It's just uh, spectacular. It's very similar to what Olmsted did 130 years ago. but. Um, we are so blessed to have had uh, this developed in our lifetime. Unfortunately, in Louisville, they propose a lot of things and they never get seem to be built in a timely manner, whereas this was all built within five years. Did you ever go to bus ride going? Or, yeah. Or um, this, this is another uh, uh, image here of uh, the Brown Foreman Center. This is actually an observation they took this old silo that was right here. You can literally climb up in this. They have a spiral staircase on the interior and look out over. It's a big observation deck that you can look out over the parklands. Very beautifully done. The Greenway and Origin Park, not to leave Southern Indiana out of all of this. So this is over across the river in Jeffersonville, Clarksville, and New Albany. So Louisville is here on the right. That's the Ohio River. And so between Jeffersonville, Clarksville, and New Albany, they built this waterfront uh, pathway system. It's called the Greenway that you can literally walk from Jeffersonville all the way along the Ohio River, all the way over to New Albany. Uh, I do not know how many miles that is. I want to say it's four or five miles. Me and my wife walk it on a regular basis. We love walking. It's just some great scenery along the way. It's beautiful. Here are some images of it. Uh, there's what a typical pathway looks like on the Greenway in the upper left-hand corner. they got this bridge that goes across. This is called Silver Creek. For those of you familiar with southern Indiana, Silver Creek is like their Beargrass Creek of Louisville. So it's this huge creek that goes 
through uh, southern Indiana called Silver Creek. And so they built these bridges over it that you can walk over and have a view of Silver Creek. And uh, the Ohio, uh, the southern Indiana Greenway, definitely something to go see and do. We walk it all the time. And the bicycle riders really enjoy traveling up and down. And another park they're going to build in southern Indiana is called the Origin Park. Origin Park. And it, this is a map of what it's going to look like when it's done. So over here, you have Clarksville and Jeffersonville on this side of the map. And over there, you have New Albany. This is the Ohio River. This is Brown Station Way. For those of you familiar with southern Indiana, we have Brown Station Way there on the northern boundary. Ohio River on the southern boundary, New Albany on the west, Clarksville and Jeffersonville on the east. And they're going to, it's right now a, a total wasteland. There's hardly anything that's there. It's kind of industrial zone, not, not, not any really things of scenic character, but they're going to totally transform it in this, this beautiful park there. It's called Origin Park. The reason why it's called Origin Park is it's right there where uh, uh, George Rogers Clark and the Falls of the Ohio and everything. It was sort of like the whole origin for this region is wow. why it's called that. It's so it's of, in the process now. It's in the process of being built as we speak. So any roads, nothing going through it right now? Or nothing just... uh, other than the, uh, the Greenway. The Southern Indiana Greenway goes through it, but that's the only thing that's been developed. Mm -hmm. So here you can actually see what it looks like right now. This is Silver Creek right here, and here's what, what a lot of it looks like. It just looks like desolate area, not very well developed. Here they have that huge map uh, showing what it's going to be like. And again, it's not much scenic uh, to look at currently, but in about 10 years it should be done, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to see it in my lifetime. Looks like a railroad track. That's not a railroad track. <coughs> that is a railroad track, yes. Okay. <coughs> There's a railroad track that goes over. So now we're uh, going away from Louisville and we're going outside the Jefferson County. We just went to the uh, southern Indiana to see the uh, Greenway and the Origin Park. So let's go south of Louisville to Bernheim Forest, one of the places I go to on a regular basis. Me and my wife go hiking a lot at Bernheim. We're there. We like to be there almost every week, but usually at least two to three times a month we get out to Bernheim Forest. It's south of Louisville, just off I-65. So there's downtown Louisville at the very top, and Bernheim Forest is way down I-65, right there. It takes about 30 minutes to drive from downtown Louisville out to Bernheim Forest. So it's a good distance out, but very well worth the effort to get out there. Me and my wife will spend half a day. Once we get out there, we just enjoy it so much. We'll spend a half day hiking the, the trails. Here's what it looks like. It's a um, arboretum. <coughs> you they have anything that grows in this climate zone is there at Bernheim Forest. Same thing at Cave Hill Cemetery. Whatever will grow in this climate zone, they have at Cave Hill, also at Bernheim Forest. They have all sorts of plants. Uh, they have a huge lake there. You can see in the upper left-hand corner of the day we were out there when I took that photograph, there were about a dozen swans that had flown in. And they were just, I don't see too many swans out at Bernheim. Now at Cave Hill you'll see swans a lot, but out at Bernheim it was kind of rare to see all these swans that are migrating through. But, and then they also have a holly forest. Um, most of you are familiar with the American holly tree. A lot of you may have had them in your yards, but there are like over 50 to 60 different variations of hollies. And at Bernheim, they have a section where they have each species of that holly planted there at Bernheim. So me and my wife always enjoy walking through that and seeing all the different styles, different colors of berries, different colors of leaves. Here's some more views of uh, Bernheim. This is one of the hiking trails right here that me and my wife walk through. That's fall foliage. This is a pathway going to the visitor center. Very neat. And you're probably wondering what the heck this is in the lower right-hand corner. 
Well, if you were to take this and turn it upright, what this is is a sculpture of a human head. There's the forehead, the nose, the mouth, the chin. So can you make out the human head that's laying on the side? One of the things they do at uh, Bernheim on a regular basis is have artists come in, natural artists, that use uh, things from the land to create artwork with. And so here they, uh, this artist used a lot of uh, branches from fallen trees to build this human head. It's a huge sculpture. A person next to this is probably about that tall. This is a massive uh, structure here. Uh, there at Bernheim that they created. They branches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like branches and wood. Yeah, all natural. It uh, was uh, created by uh, Isaac and uh, Amanda Bernheim. Depends on how you pronounce their name. Bernheim or Bernham or Burnham. Um, they ch a lot of the Germans changed the, the pronunciation of their name during World War I, and that's what uh, Isaac Burnham did. Um, he got away. He was from Germany, and so he came to the United States when he was very young, and eventually he started his own distillery. And I. W. Harper whiskey or bourbon was his main uh, bourbon that he sold, and so he was became very wealthy because of all of that. And his wife convinced him and said, "Hey, Isaac, we're doing pretty well, and we like the countryside. Why don't we do a nice?" Forest, you know, a nice natural area, and so she convinced him to do Bernheim Forest, and thank goodness she did because it was just phenomenal uh, what they created there as a legacy uh, for future generations to to enjoy like us. This is the visitor center at uh, Bernheim Forest, and um, it's known as a sustainable architectural design. All the wood was repurposed from other structures, per my understanding. I think, I forget where all the wood came from, but anyways, it's all sustainable. And this is the visitor center, and it also has a green roof on top of it. It has grass growing on the top, if you can see it there. But it's very beautiful visitor center. It's one of the highlights when you get out to Bernheim Forest to, to go and see. And speaking of um, sculptures and design, one of the popular things they've done out there in recent year is create what's called the giants. And there's three of these giants out there. You can see how big they are compared to the other people. But it has brought hundreds and thousands of people out to Bernheim Forest uh, on a regular basis to go and walk around and see the giants. This one here is viewing the lake, and you see the reflection in the lake. It's, very, it's phenomenal. You ought to see how the kids react to all of these. It is just really a, a neat thing that they've done at Bernheim. One of the other fun things we like to do is they built what's called the canopy walk, in which you can walk out this walkway to the very end, and it's way up above the trees, and so you're above the tree canopy and you can look out far distance and see the entire forest. It is just a spectacular thing that they built to help you get more into nature, if you will. But it's called the canopy walk. And so here is the trail that leads out to the canopy walk. You walk this out there and stand here and you just kind of just 360 degrees look at the entire forest. Udell Gardens, that's up I-71. Uh, Udell Gardens, so here we are in um, Gene Snyder and uh, I-71, way out past Crestwood, Kentucky, and the red dot up there is where uh, Udell Gardens is. So it's way away from downtown Louisville. It's in Odom County. By the way, uh, Bernheim Forest is in Bullitt County, uh, not in Jefferson. Um, this uh, little castle-like structure, little fantasy sort of thing that they built there in Udell Gardens, kind of interesting design. Here's more of an overall view of Udell Gardens with the castle down below there, and the, the foliage, the gardens. Both my daughters were married at Udell Gardens. They have a, they do a big a wedding venue there. 
here's what some of it looks like. Yeah, just uh, every time we go to Udell Gardens, we're just like in seventh heaven to view all of this. So spectacular. Yeah, here's some more views. This little tree-lined walkway here, that's what the uh, bride and groom go down to the wedding venue in. So they go through this natural sort of cathedral, if you will, of trees. They go up to the house? Uh, it actually walks out to a garden area. Oh, just so and I want to end on this photograph here. This is uh, Thurman Hutchins Park. It's out off River Road near Zorn Avenue. Me and my wife walk around this lake area on a regular basis as well as particularly in the evenings. A beautiful lake, the sky, uh, the people fishing off the pier here. Uh, there's, all sort of, there's all sorts of soccer games going on. There's a, a baseball game uh, on one of the fields. It's so peaceful and restful. It's, again, it's off of Zorn Avenue. Uh, just east of Zorn, just east of Zorn, off River Road, and uh, we just love Thurman Hutchins Park. Oh, that's not part of their estate. No, it's not. No, it's it's named for uh, Th Thurman and Hutchins. It's two people's names, but uh, just a beautiful uh, scenic sky, if you will. We love it, and so, anyways. There's all sorts of ways to go out around Louisville and Jefferson County to enjoy nature, the landscape. Yeah, we have some beautiful buildings and houses and all here, but we really enjoy the landscape design. It's just phenomenal. So, anyways, any questions on any of that? Okay.